You don't sound like a Democrat to me. I hereby, you can raise your right hand, you're definitely a conservative. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Always Congresswoman. Always a pleasure, Sean. Oh, you've noticed it too, Sean. Interesting. I too have noticed that Tulsi Gabbard does indeed sound like a conservative. Interesting. Everyone is beginning to see it. Now, she's not just going to come out and unequivocally declare that she is a conservative and she supports conservatism. I think that would be a little bit too brazen, uh, given what I believe she wants to do in the future. But what she's doing is she's dropping a few hints, a few clues here and there. She's giving you a puzzle piece here and there. And when you finally have all of the pieces and you put them together, it reads... I am a conservative. So let's look at what Tulsi Gabbard has been saying on Twitter lately. So she tweeted out, anyone who disagrees with pro-Antifa MSM bias on Rittenhouse trial is smeared as a white supremacist terrorist. Disgusting. So, I mean, I guess that she's anti-Antifa. In other words, she's just fa. She then tweeted out tacit support for Republican governor-elect of Virginia, Glenn Youngkin, because she's seemingly also against critical race theory, like he is, which is a made-up issue. And when it comes to Build Back Better, she tweeted out a video of her appearance on Sean Hannity's show on Fox News, saying government is already too big and powerful as it is, and the Build Back Better bill is going to make it even worse. Now, let me just give you some additional context before we watch the clip. This is an individual who ran for president as a progressive in 2020. Some individuals even declared her more progressive and left-leaning than Bernie Sanders. But here she is now going to speak out against what she supported about a year ago. Would you agree with me that it would be a good idea to go back to being energy independent? Yes, of course. Uh, not many Democrats agree with you. Would you agree with me that we have too much debt and we really can't afford 1.75 or 3.5 trillion in new spending? Yes, Sean. And, and here's the reality with the bill that they're continuing to push forward is that our government is too powerful and too big, even as it is. And this bill is only going to make matters worse. Uh, the provisions in the bill are so vague that really it's going to be unelected bureaucrats who end up deciding how these provisions are implemented and no accountability. Uh, and, and really, it'll empower them to be able to stick their noses into every aspect of our lives, furthering this, this cradle to grave mentality of government dependence that makes us lose even more of our autonomy as we are paying for it. As government gets bigger, our wallets are getting smaller. Big government bad. Tulsi Gabbard, 2021. Look, this is not even an attempt to be a right-wing populist. This is just straight up Reaganism. It's straight up Reaganism. And to show you how sharply she's changed, you look at her policy platform from 2020 when she was running for president and supporting all of these so-called big government policies that she's now inexplicably denouncing. Now, you can't find it on her website because it's gone and currently she just has a link to her podcast. But using the Wayback Machine, I looked at her platform. So before she explicitly backed away from Medicare for All, she had this on her platform. This is a big government policy. She also supported Medicare negotiating drug prices, which was in the original Build Back Better bill. Uh, at another point in the interview, she agreed that America should be energy independent. And I didn't play that part, but basically what it means is that she thinks we should indeed continue to drill away when she sponsored legislation to get off of fossil fuels. It was literally called the Off Fossil Fuels Act, and she had it on her 2020 policy platform. She also supported immigration reform, and she went further on her own platform than Build Back Better, but yet now she's suddenly against it. She's against these things because it's too much government, it's big government overreach, when Build Back Better itself is a compromise and even her policy platform went further than Build Back Better. This is a 180. And as Shu points out on Twitter, I understand ditching the Democratic Party as they are full of demons, but this is a complete 180 in ideology and policy. She ran on Medicare for all and student debt relief and progressive taxation and shit like a year ago. Exactly. It's pretty brazen. I mean, she did a Dave Rubin at four times the speed as Dave Rubin. It's a really sharp turnaround. Um, and I don't necessarily know what motivates her, but this is my thinking here, and this is all nothing but speculation, so bear with me. Um, I think that she basically saw that when she ran for president, which she clearly wants to be president, she had uh, no route to success in the Democratic Party. Moderates rejected her. The left rejected her. 
resoundingly so, albeit, you know, the moderates and the leftists rejected her for different reasons, but still she was rejected and she pulled it like 1%. So now she's thinking, I don't really have a path to the White House through the Democratic Party. Perhaps I can run as a Republican in 2024. And now she's using this time before the GOP primary to kind of build up her credibility with conservatives. They already kind of were open-minded to her when she was running for president in 2020 because of some of the things that she said. Uh, but now she's just kind of going mask off and she's really going hard in terms of pandering. So uh, I think that what is going to happen is if she chose to run in a GOP primary against Donald Trump, she would absolutely lose because Donald Trump would point out correctly so that she endorsed commie Bernie in 2016 and she's going to get laughed out of the room and perhaps poll at less than 1%, do even worse than she did in 2020. But in the event Trump isn't running and she competes in a GOP primary, you know, assuming that the voters won't care that she was a far leftist a couple of years ago, Maybe they will see her as an outsider. But then again, I'm skeptical to think that considering she's not really running as anti-establishment anymore. She's not trying to be a Josh Hawley right wing populist. She's just espousing Reaganomics and fear mongering about big government. And I just I don't even think that this is going to appeal to people in the Republican Party at this point. And she has no core ideology. She's a serial panderer. So who is going to see this person and take them seriously on either side? She's just saying what she needs to say to get ahead. She represents everything wrong with American politics, and she is the quintessential slimy politician that she once denounced. She'll say anything to get ahead. But in a GOP primary, honestly, I think she has a better shot than in a Democratic primary. Maybe she'll even pull above 1% if she's lucky. But either way, uh, the people who were relentlessly promoting her back in 2019, the podcast hosts in particular, maybe they should, you know, show a little bit of humility and uh, humble themselves. Maybe they should uh, admit that they were wrong, and maybe we shouldn't trust their judgment because now Tulsi Gabbard, she's not mincing words. She is basically functionally a conservative at this point, and I don't know when she's going to officially identify as a conservative, but either way, what she's doing is trying to build up credibility with right-wing audiences. Either she's doing that because she wants to show at Fox News, maybe she wants more viewers on her podcast, maybe she wants to run for president in 2024, I don't know, but either way, Tulsi Gabbard at this point is a right-winger, and when people like me pointed out these red flags back in 2019, you all called me an establishment shill Shit and said that I was smearing her. Well, uh, turns out I was right to look at these red flags and take them seriously. So perhaps listen to the people who sounded the alarm about Tulsi Gabbard, because perhaps we know more about what we're talking about than people like Jimmy Dore, who just supported her seemingly because she went on his show and Bernie Sanders didn't go on his show. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started shilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.